What's going on, Resto Mods? We're at Quarantine Cruise number 10, and I ran into a fellow Northern Californian, Matt, here with his, what are we looking at? 69 Chevelle. 69 Chevelle. Lots of custom stuff going on here. What do we, where do we start? Start on the outside. I did the whole car front to back, top to bottom. Okay, no way. Um, shaved off some of the trim, converted everything over to black. Had a guy custom make a billet grill, so that's different, not all plastic. Okay. Obviously some LEDs in there. Yep and then just shaved all the trim down the side. So no marker light. Okay. No emblems. No rain. Uh... Windshield, I cut the trim around the windshield yep. off. Yep, drip rail. Wow. Cut the drip rail off. Back glass, cut the uh, trim off of that as well. That's subtle stuff. I didn't even notice those things. Those well, and big, now, now they make oversized glass kits and it's a lot easier to do. Okay. I did all this with original glass and then built the body out to the car, to the glass. That looks great. I didn't even notice that when I uh, first looked, uh, on, looked at this car, but it now, I mean, I see why it looks a little different when you see it roll up. Yeah, yeah. The little subtleties. Because this, this is normally like a little hump right here, too, yep. where the drip rail is, where I shaved all that yeah. out. Uh, what do we go with with the wheels and brakes here? Wheels are Got super cool. Got forge line wheels and then wheel with disc brakes. All the way around. Yeah. Cool. Interior, we'll go interior first and then the engine, but interior, super custom. It looks to me like uh, like modern Camaro gauges? Yeah, so it's a 2015 Camaro dash okay. that I molded into the car. But I didn't want the Camaro digital stuff. Okay. I wanted the old school look with it. So we molded in the autometer gauges, and then I molded autometer gauges oh, actually no into the kidding. back of the pod of the Camaro. All right, I gotta come over here and check that out because I didn't even notice that. Yeah, so I, cut the, I cut the Camaro pod apart okay. and then molded autometer gauges in from the backside. So, so these are all autometer gauges from the back. Yeah, so that would be full LED modern Camaro stuff going on, and you just put the, the autometers in there. That is super cool. Right. Wiring that in, I will admit, probably would have been above my pay grade. That's okay. why I didn't leave the Camaro digital stuff. Okay. Because I wouldn't have known how to do it. I really like that. That's a that's a real cool little little tiny detail. Yeah, yeah. And then molded in these other gauges into the dash there. Yeah. Those are all custom. I don't really drive the car a lot in the winter, so I didn't need the heater vents right there. Okay. So I just capped up that whole area and then molded in the gauges. And if you notice, you know, this one's flat. Okay. And then they slowly angle yeah, more yeah. and more and more to the driver. Because you got to see it. So I sat there and angled them where I wanted them. A pet peeve of mine is I don't like how everyone puts their window switches on the center console. Okay. So I didn't want to have window switches on the console. So we, I spent literally probably a day trying to figure out where to put them where you couldn't really see them. And I flush mounted them on the bottom side of this panel. They're push-pull style windows so for your power windows. So windows are full electric. Power. Yep. Power windows. And they're underneath, underneath down there. Okay. So that way you don't see them. Sick. It's just like, you know, little stuff like that. Uh, what are we going on? What do we got transmission going on here? It's a 204R overdrive GM training. Sweet. And then fully built to handle the power. And uh, what is that power? What are we pushing under the hood? Let's take a About look at that. About 685 to 700. Woo! So modern Camaro dash. Uh, we tuck the, the electric windows. The seats I'm seeing are Corvette. Those are a Corvette C7 Sport Comp seat because I wanted the holes on the top for the seat belts to come okay. through. Um, but then I liked the carbon fiber that we were working with already inside, so yeah. we cut the seat apart and then rewrapped it and added the carbon fiber. So this uh, this insert here yeah, is, yeah. All, is all fresh. So you got a little bit of carbon, the seat itself is carbon fiber. Got you know, I don't know. I think this is just like a composite plastic. Okay. This right here is carbon fiber. Okay. So you have some carbon fiber here. You got some carbon fiber in the is it in the yep. dash? Yeah, in the dash. The okay. I did a little bit in the dash on that steering, the steering wheel. wheel, and then I did a little bit in the door panel right cool. here. Oh yeah. And then I rolled it into the rear it. of the car. I did a little piece on this panel here. Okay. Oh, Those yeah. seats to match this seat. Uh, I even had to build a three-piece package tray to go around the roll cage. This thing is serious. And then if you know a C7, this seat actually has a huge bulky airbag right here. And I wasn't going to need that. And it was just kind of ugly looking sitting yeah. there. So we cut it all off. Popped it all off. I body worked it all, primed it, and then repainted these. Because these are originally gloss black. Dude, I just repainted incredible, them. Incredible, man. The seats. I love the steering wheel. Oh, yeah. Wait until after. You'll see the trunk, too. All right. Oh, yeah. I got to see the trunk as well. Let's start with what's under the hood. You said yeah. the high six is 700 horsepower. Yep. And... Uh, Pop it open. What so are we it's actually 
when you first look, it just looks like a normal small block, which yeah. it is, but it's actually a 454 small block, not a big block. So it's a Motown block that's built designed for large cubic inch. Wow. So it's a four and a quarter bore, four inch stroke, true 454. Wow. And then it's got big heads and a big intake to it's be able to- huge intake. Yeah, yeah, that's a Super Victor too. And then my cylinder head guy, Tony Mamo, fully poured and polished out the inside of that manifold to match the heads. So this thing is purpose built, pretty serious. And you said- Oh, we have fun with it. You were mentioning uh, Sears Point or whatever it's called now. What is it called now? I don't even know. Okay, it might just yeah. be called Sonoma. So we're both from the Bay Area. Uh, Sonoma Raceway, is I that? Think, yeah. I think that's what it might be called. It used just to be called Raceway. Sears Point or whatever it is. You, do, you, do you get this thing out there? I used to run it a lot out there. I haven't recently. Okay. But with this setup, it should be running around 10, 20, 10, 30. Wow. Uh, and we were talking about no chrome on this car at all. Yeah. Um, so I ran it for about 10 years with all the chrome. Okay. So the bumper was chrome. I had polished wheels, the chrome drip rails, okay. the chrome around the windshield. And that was kind of the thing then. And then I kind of just wanted to build something different that people hadn't seen yeah. in a Chevelle. So just started thinking, well, what would really pop? Change the whole look of the car. The whole look of the car. Small. Yeah. I, I mean, the interior was with this build. The color was with this build. The car's originally a similar red to this, but solid red, not okay. metallic. Okay. And I was just kind of over the solid red. Wow, man. So. That's where we went. Came up, I came up with this idea to do everything oh, black. I love the black. I feel like I feel like this is something you, you, you're starting to see it more and more because it looks so good. I mean, it's the car looks right with the black bumpers and stuff. On. Well, and I did all the body and paint and painted this car and did all these bumpers black six years ago. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you've been it, running it a while. And when yeah. I first did it, and I'd be posting, a lot of people yeah. would be like, "You ruined that what car. Did you do? you yeah. destroyed it." It but, doesn't look like a Chevelle anymore. And now everyone's like, oh my yeah. God, that car is beautiful. It's perfect. You did it exactly. Yeah. Six, yeah. six years ahead six of your years. time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's take a look at this trunk because being from the Bay Area, we like, we like our music. We like wow. our music. Take a look at this. And you can't build a car top to bottom, front to back, and then not do the trunk. Not do the trunk. Oh my. So you got to do the trunk. Oh, wow. Are those W7s? So, W6s. W6s. 212 W6s. And then the digital amps. JL is yep. uh, top of the line. If you don't if you don't know that, this is a serious system. These amps are some of the best that they make. Yeah. Uh, and those subs are some of the best that they make. Yeah, if you wanted to do a W7, the problem is you'd have to bring the box like all the way out to here. Yeah. Because they need so much air volume. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. So I mean, the, my buddy who built that. This is insane. That's oh, yeah, my buddy spec'd out the box and everything. And it actually goes up the step. So Chevelle has a little step up in the trunks. So he oh, built a box to try to make it as far forward as we can because I wanted to have some trunk space. Yeah. Wow. Um, and of course, you went with the carbon fiber in the trunk as well. That... This is where I first went with the carbon fiber. Okay. Um, we built the trunk first and I really liked the stuff. So I wanted to put touches of it in the interior. Okay. And that's what kind of what I rolled it off of. Dude, this thing is full of surprises. So cool. Matt, thank you so much for chatting with yeah, us. Uh, appreciate, appreciate it and uh, keep on cruising, man. Yeah, buddy.